Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2021 Chevy Equinox, we're gonna be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Demco Supplemental Braking System with the Wireless Coach Link. So before we kind of dig in and get too carried away uh, checking out the braking system itself, I figured it'd be useful if we kind of touch base and go over uh, all of the main components that we're gonna need to safely pull our Equinox behind our motorhome. So the five main components that you're gonna need to flat tow your Equinox down the road safely is going to be one, the base plate. That's gonna provide us with the solid attachment point. That way we can hook our tow bar up to it. The tow bar is gonna be that second main component. And this is gonna be the physical link that actually connects the front of your Chevy to the back of your motorhome. The third main component is going to be safety cables. And these are there in the event of an unlikely disconnect. Uh, these are gonna keep your Equinox connected to your motorhome. The fourth main component is going to be tow bar wiring. And what the wiring is gonna do is transfer the lighting functions from the back of your coach to the back of your Equinox, uh, not only keeping you safe, but legal as well. And last but not least, the fifth main component is going to be your braking system. And what this is gonna do is apply the brakes in your vehicle whenever you hit the brakes in your motorhome. And that's just gonna help bring you to a more predictable and complete stop. There are a couple more components that I figured were worth mentioning and definitely something I would recommend. One of them is what's called a charge line kit. What that's gonna do is more or less maintain or trickle charge your Equinox's battery whenever you're pulling it down the road. The manufacturer suggests that you do that and honestly, I do too, and that's because a lot of these braking systems are gonna draw battery power whenever they operate, which can wear your battery down and leave you with a flat battery whenever you get to your campsite or wherever you're going. The other one is going to be what's called a stoplight switch. And what that's gonna allow you to do is uh, pick up a signal whenever the brake pedal inside your vehicle is depressed, whenever the braking system is operating, and that's going to allow you to hook that up to an indicator light or some type of indicator inside of the motorhome, depending on what braking system you have. And that's gonna let you know that, hey, everything back here is working properly like it should. Now that we've established all those components, uh, let's talk about the braking system and make sure it'll work for your application. So this particular one is a permanent type system. All right, it's gonna stay with the tow vehicle and it's designed to work with motorhomes that have the classic hydraulic brakes. Um, it's one of my favorite systems uh, for those applications, but I'll kind of get more into that later. If you have a different setup, you're gonna need to think about a different braking system. For example, if you have air brakes, all right, if your motorhome's larger, has is air brakes, the system that I personally would recommend uh, would be the Air Force One, um, super reliable, Great system, easy to use, and specifically designed for those motorhomes with air brakes. And then you kind of have um, a system that can work with both, whether you have air brakes or hydraulic brakes, um, and that is the Blue Ox Patriot 3. But the only difference is, is that is a portable type braking system. All right, so you're gonna have to set that up and remove it every time you want a flat tow. Not a huge deal, it's pretty straightforward and easy, but um, something to keep in mind or it might be a great option for you. Uh, you know, if you change your tow vehicle a lot, that way you can take that braking system with you, put it in your new vehicle and, uh, and everything else. So uh, just wanted to kind of set a baseline and make sure uh, that you knew what system you uh, need before we kind of continue on. So with all that said, um, I know one of the big concerns that a lot of customers have is how easy is this gonna be to use? And honestly, this is one of my favorite systems. Um, super easy to use. We do a ton of them here and they're very reliable and easy to understand and figure out whenever you're ready to set everything up. Um, really, you're only gonna have a couple of steps. One of them is to hook up your tether here for your breakaway switch. And then we're gonna have a switch on the inside of our vehicle that we need to flip to activate our system. One of the best parts about this system is the fact that it is proportional. So more or less what that means is the harder you apply the brakes in your coach or your motorhome, the uh, brakes are gonna be applied at the same rate 
and your Equinox. And that's just really going to help uh, make your driving experience nice and smooth. You know, you're not going to feel your Equinox kind of want to push you around or drag behind you. So to kind of give you an example on how it would work, um, let's say if uh, we hit a red light and we're kind of just rolling to a stop, you know, lightly on the brake pedal. The brake pedal and the Chevy is going to do the same thing. On the same note, let's say if we're cruising down the interstate, uh, maybe there's an accident or some traffic up ahead, something like that, and you, you really got to stand on that, that brake and come to a, an emergency stop, the Equinox is going to do the same thing. So, like I said, um, everything's going to work nice and smooth and uh, make it a lot more predictable and uh, just give you a better overall driving experience. So the system does have the wireless coach link, and this is really nice actually. You can kind of monitor um, your brake pedal movement and your towed vehicle from right here in the driver's seat of your motorhome. So this just plugs right in to a 12 volt outlet, um, and it's gonna power up. And what's gonna happen is, we're gonna have a uh, indicator here. Whenever the brakes are applied in your towed vehicle, this is gonna illuminate. So um, I'll hit the brake in our motorhome here. I have our system turned way down so everything will illuminate. You can see that it's turning red and that's letting me know that the brake pedal in the towed vehicle is moving or, you know, being depressed. When it's held down for a long enough time, you'll hear that buzzer go off and that's going to let you know if you have a disconnect or something like that. Um, you know, let's say if the brakeway pin was pulled, vehicle came unhooked. Very unlikely, but at least you have a warning. Whenever you let off the brake, that light goes away. So I did mention the breakaway switch or the breakaway pin, and that's what this component is here. It's just a safety device. Um, and what this is gonna do, if you were happen to come disconnected, very unlikely, but you know, there's always a possibility of those types of things. But what happened is this pin would get pulled out, and what that's gonna do is activate the braking system on the Equinox, and that's just gonna help slow things down and get you to a uh, safe spot. So at the end of the day, a really reliable braking system and one you really can't go wrong with, you know, it's gonna help make for that smooth and safe travel. Now, as far as the installation goes, uh, not gonna lie, it's a little involved. This gonna take you some time, you know, running all the wires and everything else, but um, as long as you stay focused, you should be able to get the job done. Speaking of which, let's go ahead, pull into the garage and put it on together now. To begin our installation, we're gonna first need to mount up all of our major components. Now you may have noticed the front of our vehicle is taken apart and that's because we installed uh, all of our other flat tow components like the braking system while we did the base plate. And that's because there's just all this extra room to work. So that's what I recommend doing. If not, um, this can be done with everything back together, just a little bit uh, trickier. With that said, first thing that we're going to mount is our main operating unit, which is this here. And this is pretty straightforward. All I simply did was attach it to our fuse box cover. All right, so I just drilled some holes in it, used some zip ties. It's nice and uh, secure. And what we'll get to in a minute is all the wiring, but when you do this, you wanna leave yourself enough wiring to where you can actually remove this if you do happen uh, to need to change a fuse or, or something like that. So, worked out pretty well, easy to get to, and uh, looks good as well. Now you can mount up your breakaway switch, which is this component here. Uh, this is really straightforward. It simply just bolts to a bracket that came on our base plate. So just nut and bolt it. And that's really all there is to that. If your base plate doesn't have a bracket, you can pick one up, uh, multiple different types uh, right here at each trailer. Now we can move into the driver's side floorboard area and mount up our actuator cylinder here. All right, and this is going to bolt to your brake pedal arm. I did have to switch out the bolts here that you use to actually clamp around the brake pedal arm. The ones that originally come on it are just a little too short. Good news is though, they actually include these longer ones in the kit. So you just switch those out. Um, and 
bolt it to the brake pedal arm. Now when you tighten this down, you don't have to really, you know, barrel down on it by any means. You want it nice and snug, um, and it's going to provide us with plenty of clamping force. And what we're looking to do is we're going to have a wire coming off of that actuator cylinder. And that's going to have an anchor that needs to get connected to the firewall. So if you kind of pull this carpet back, then I have a ton of options as far as where we can mount it. But this setup actually turned out really nice. The kit's going to come with this bracket, that silver bracket there. And what you can do is overhang it and use these self tappers to secure that bracket into the firewall. All right, and then you can take your anchor and a nut and a bolt. The nut and a bolt does not come with it, so you will have to source it on your own. I just used a 5 16 bolt, maybe about three quarters or an inch long with a nylon lock nut to secure the anchor. And what we're looking to do is make sure everything is straight as possible. So not only this way, but also uh, when the brake pedal is depressed, you want that cable to be nice and straight. That way it gives us a nice and smooth operation. You don't have to worry about damaging the cable or anything like that. You are going to want some slack in the cable whenever it is in the rusting position. It's a little bit of movement there. And you can achieve that on this side of the anchor. There's going to be a four millimeter uh, hex head set screw. So you can loosen that up, pull your cable either tighter or looser to the desired tension and snug that set screw uh, back down. Now you can grab the nylon air tube and get this plugged into the actuator cylinder. You want to have a nice clean cut on the end of it, which I'll show you in a minute. But this is a quick connect, so you're simply just going to plug that right in. Kind of pull out, make sure it's seated, which it is. And this is eventually going to get routed out into the engine compartment. But before we do that, let's mount up our other component. That way we can run this out into the engine compartment as well as some of the wires that need to go out there as well. Now I can focus on mounting up this component here, which is a G-Force controller. I simply just use the provided screws to secure it to the driver's side kick panel. Really the only thing you have to pay attention to with this is you want it facing the direction of travel. So you want this uh, black knob here to face towards the front of the vehicle. And you want to make sure it's nice and level and straight. So not only front to back and side to side. So find that good spot, secure it. Then we're going to have some wires that come off of it. So we're going to take these wires as well as that nylon air tube that we had plugged into our actuator cylinder. Find a spot to run them through the firewall and into the engine compartment, which will be located right here in this area. So what we did to get our wires through is if you cut, cut the carpet a little bit behind it, you're going to see a grommet, a factory grommet. And we actually punched a hole through that grommet just big enough to get our wires and our uh, nylon air tubing through there. Be really careful when you do this. You don't want to, um, you know, get carried away and damage one of the factory uh, wires that run through there by accident. So just stay off to the side and uh, take your time with it. Once you have that opening created, you can go ahead and push your wiring and your air tube uh, through into the engine compartment. Now in the engine compartment, here's where our wiring and our nylon air tube uh, come up. Just routed these alongside of each other towards our main operating unit. And while we're here, we can get the other end of our airline tube plugged in, so the operating unit goes right there. I said I'd show you um, what you want the end of the tube to look like. You want to use a tool like this or a utility knife or a tubing cutter. You don't want to use a regular pair of snips because that can pinch it sometimes and potentially create a leak. So you just want to cut it, make sure it's nice and flat, straight, no burrs or anything like that on it. So that's a good example on how it should look. 
And this one just plugs right in uh, the same way as we did the actuator cylinder. So we'll continue on with our wiring. So here's our G-Force controller wires. We're gonna have some wires that come right out of the main operating unit. And we're gonna run these more or less together. I'm just gonna run them down along through here over where our headlight would uh, kind of be, where we can start to get everything hooked up. All right, so it's relatively straightforward. So the G-Force controller wires, uh, the green one, the yellow one, and the white one are gonna get tied into our diode wiring. So you're gonna cut the diode wiring in half. One end of the diode wiring you're going to connect with the G-Force controller, so color for color. So green diode wire, green G-Force controller wire. One end goes into a buck connector. Other end of the diode wire gets plugged in there to complete the circuit. Same thing with the yellow one. And same thing with the white one. The white one though, you are gonna wanna add uh, a length of extra white wire, maybe a foot or two. Uh, the kit comes with it. And we're gonna ground this. So what I've done is simply just routed that wire right up over here to our core support. There's actually a factory ground stud. So you can remove this nut with a 13 millimeter, crimp on a ring terminal uh, to the end of that white wire, put it over and tighten this back down and that'll provide us with that ground. There's gonna be two more wires from our G-Force controller, a black one and a red one. And these just get matched up color for color uh, to the black and red wire from our main operating unit. So really straightforward. Those just get buck connected to complete that circuit. That leaves us with two more wires from our main operating unit that we need to hook up. So we'll have a blue one and a brown one. And these are gonna get connected to our breakaway switch. So I simply just routed these down underneath of our washer fluid reservoir bottle there, where I have them connected to our breakaway switch wires. So the brown one from our operating unit will get connected to the orange wire from our breakaway switch. And what I did with this one as well is I took a, an extra piece of wire, maybe three or four foot long, and put it into this side. This will get ran up to our battery. Um, that way we can hook it up to power. But we'll come back to that in just a second. The blue wire from our main operating unit that's gonna get connected to the black wire from our breakaway switch. Again, using the buck connectors. So the wires, the breakaway switch wires, how I got them up here is I simply just kind of followed them down along our base plate and into the breakaway switch. So now if you move back to that extra black wire that I connected there, I said that we need to run up to our battery. I just ran it up through here, kind of the same path as the other wires. So, comes around pretty straightforward. And now what we can do is grab the included fuse holder, make sure the fuse is not installed. We're gonna cut that in half. Strip back those ends. Give them a good twist. One side is going to receive a ring terminal. The other end of the fuse holder, we're gonna take a buck connector. Now I'm using heat shrink type buck connectors for all my outside connections, which I do suggest, just provides us with a little more protection because the ends seal up. The other end of the buck connector is gonna get connected to that black wire that we ran up here. And then we can grab a heat source to seal up the ends. Now we need to hook up our ring terminal to the positive battery uh, post here. So if you open up this cover, we're going to have a 10 millimeter nut. And we're going to loosen this up. We're not going to completely remove it. So we'll cut it out just big enough to fit around 
the bolt there. So that should be about right. Flip this back open and I get everything lined up here. This is just gonna go underneath that nut. And then we can tighten the nut back down. At this point, we can tee into our factory vacuum line. So the vacuum line that you're looking for will be this one right here. Quick way to tell is the fact that it goes right into our brake booster. And it's a little tight in here. But right here in this area is probably the most open, so that's where we're going to work. What you need to do is cut that vacuum line in half. That way we can get our other components in there. So here's the piece that we cut in half. This is the end that goes to the engine. What I'm going to do is go maybe another couple inches down, clip that off, and this piece, what you're going to do is take the check valve, push it in, come back to that piece that goes to the engine. You want the black portion of the check valve to face towards the engine. So I'll get that pressed in. Then you want to take your T, get that pushed on. This is simply just going to get connected to the other side of our vacuum line that goes to our brake booster. So we went ahead, cut off about two foot of the included uh, hose. So one end is going to get pressed over that fitting that's pre-attached to our main operating unit. Other end is going to get plugged right into the T there. So the one last thing that we have to do, one of our major components is the wireless transmitter here. So we're underneath the driver's side dash and this is a transmitter box. All right, and what I did was just use the provided um, hook and loop fastener. It's sticky on the back, and I just stuck it to uh, this plastic um, ventilation uh, duct work here. I just put a zip tie around it for good measure. It's really secure, not going anywhere. And this is gonna have two wires that come off that we need to hook up. So the wires are gonna come right out of the box and eventually they'll split off. All right, so when they split off, they're already gonna have um, a, a white and a red wire pre-attached to them by these butt connectors. And this is what we need to hook up. So the white wire is gonna be a ground, red wire is gonna go over to our stoplight switch. That said, let's go ahead and focus on the ground first. So the white wire that we need to ground out, I simply just attached a ring terminal to. There's gonna be a bracket here, factory bracket. On this bracket, there's gonna be a pre-drilled hole. What you can do is just take a nut and a bolt, run it through that hole and through the ring terminal and tighten it down and that'll provide us with that ground that we need. As far as the red wire is concerned, this is just going to get connected to one side of our stoplight switch. Now this is a separate component um, that you will need to pick up separately. And we do carry these right here at e-trailer. But pretty straightforward, just take a butt connector and connect it to one side of the stoplight switch. Really doesn't matter. In our case, this is the red wire here and goes to that wire on our stoplight switch. So I just figured I'd elaborate a little bit more about the stoplight switch. And the reason we need it is so we can actually pick up a brake light signal. So whenever the brake pedals push down um, from our braking system operating, that's going to send a signal out of the switch to our wireless transmitter, which in turn will send that information to the uh, monitor that we have plugged into the front of the motorhome. That's how we're going to be able to achieve and know that our brake pedal is being depressed in the vehicle whenever we're flat towing. So this is what the stoplight switch looks like. It's just going to get bolted to a bracket and kind of set against the brake pedal arm. 
That way, whenever the brake pedal arm moves, it's going to activate that switch and send out the appropriate signal. So now with all of the components all hooked up and everything on our vehicle side, I want to come back to our fuse holder, take the included fuse, and get that in position. So just to do a quick test, uh, one thing that we can do is pull our breakaway switch here. So if you pull the pin out, we should hear our unit turn on and our brake pedal be depressed. Now with an extra set of hands, we can reattach our fascia. Don't forget to plug in any electrical uh, connectors that you may have needed to disconnect. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Demco supplemental braking system with the wireless coach link on our 2021 Chevrolet Equinox.